The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Grains, CNM Seeds, and Syngenta Canada. Find more episodes of The Wheat School by going to wheatschool.com. Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com. And we are talking the Yen, the Yield Enhancement Network here on Wheat School on Real Agriculture. And I'm ever so excited. We have three years of data now with the Yen in particular, two really solid years, 21 and 22. And there's some tremendous differences that we're seeing here in the yen in terms of how do we achieve high wheat yields exactly what yen was developed to do was to determine how do we find those high wheat yields how do how do we move lower yielding growers up that scale so that they become high yielding growers and here to discuss that with me today on the wheat school is dr dennis pennington he is the michigan state wheat extension specialist dennis welcome to the show how are you doing? Oh, just awesome! Thanks. Always excited to have you here on the, on Wheat School because, man, you you are a real wheat superstar now, Dennis. And and you know it's too bad you're not in Ontario. We have Joanna; she's another wheat superstar. But we like all the wheat superstars here in Ontario. So, Dennis, when mm-hmm. you, when you look at the yen, and you've really done an excellent job in terms of picking uh, or trying to pick apart the data, and I mean, biomass always drives yield, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We've seen that for all three years in a row. Yeah. And that, that's not really a surprise because no. the grain is only a percentage of the biomass. So it's really not how do we get high biomass or, or maybe it is how we get high biomass. But what, what components of that high biomass, that grain yield, really drive the process? And I love this concept that you've used in terms of analyzing the top 20% versus the bottom 20%. And when you look across all the different com- yield components, so we have test weight, or well, actually we don't have test weight, it's not a yield component. We have thousand kernel weight, we have uh, head size, we have uh, gr- um, the number of kernels per head, all of those things, uh, any of those that really jump out at you? Yeah, there's not really big differences in those yield components that are really contributing to those high yields. It really, the one that is, that is contributing the highest yield and the biggest difference is the number of heads per unit area or heads per meter squared. That is the biggest thing that's different between those high yield guys and, and, and the lower yield guys. Yeah, and so for the the growers in the U.S. that listen to this, it's heads per square foot or heads per square yard, right? Whatever whatever area of unit you want to measure. But it's really interesting because people will say, well, the, the, the seeds weigh more. Well, yeah, they do, but just a little bit more, not very much. Whereas when we get into this, this heads per unit area, this heads per meter squared, and, and as you can see on this graph, just unbelievable differences, like th- almost – three heads for the high yield growers versus two heads for the low yield growers. We're looking at a 35, 36, 38 percent yield increase in heads per meter squared. So if that's if that's what's driving the yield, Dennis, what else do you pull out of the yen that says, how do those high yield growers get to those big head numbers? You know, I think probably one of the most important things that those high yield growers are doing to get to the higher yield is they're planting. I used to say planting early, but I would say planting on time uh, because if the only way to get those high head numbers is to get planted in the fall early enough that you can get that fall tillering to occur. Um, so that planting date is probably the very most important thing that you can do to drive higher yield potential. Um, and, and we see it in our research trials. We're, we're seeing it in the yen. We're, we're seeing it everywhere. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Come on. Look at the data. It's a six-day difference between the high-yield growers and the low-yield growers in 23, or in 22, right. rather. It's an, it's an 11. Come on. What's six, six to 10 days? It can't mean anything. Well, so we have some research where we looked at planting dates, and we planted uh, every 15 days starting September 15th, going all the way through November 15th. And if you look at, if you dig a plant in December, and you look at how much fall development there is on that plant, 
the difference between the October 1 and the October 15th, only 15 days difference, is huge. The October 15th plant had no tillers at all, none, and the October 1 had three tillers. So that's a fairly <laughs> narrow window where you got to get on the early end of that. You got to get on the front end if you want to get that tiller development in the fall. Because if you miss that window and it's not very many days to miss it by, you miss it um, and you just don't have that that number of tillers and the number of heads uh, per meter squared that's going to be so important toward your yield potential um, the following mm-hmm. harvest. Wow, look at look at that. Like it's it's the difference between three heads per plant and one head per plant. Like like that is massive and that's a fifteen day difference. So I guess maybe six days difference in planting does make a big difference and, and at least one if not two heads per plant. So so that really so wait a minute though. So I'm gonna plant later, I'm gonna up my seeding rate. That'll fix the problem. Yeah, so we looked at that as well. And, you know, the later you plant, the more you do need to increase your seeding rate, but you will never, ever gain back what you've lost in yield potential. Um, the yield potential is always lower the later you plant. And, and we've looked at studies that, that show, you know, if we increase management, we split nitrogen, we add fungicide applications and sulfur, and we cannot manage our way out of the yield loss that we have by planting later. We can never gain back what we lost from planting later with management. So it is all about that planting date and getting planted on time. And so I, way back when I think I was in Michigan one time presenting, and I think I made the statement that you cannot be both a high yield soybean grower and a high yield wheat grower at the same time. Because if you plant for maximum soybeans, guess what? You're going to beat up your wheat crop. And that statement still seems to, to hold true based on this data. Yeah, but we, there are some soybean varieties, some earlier maturing soybean varieties that we can plant that still, you're really not losing a lot of yield potential. Um, so on your acres, you know you're going to plant a wheat, plant an earlier maturing soybean variety so that you are able to get your wheat planted on time um, on your, your fields that are going to go to wheat in the fall. Yeah, and the other part of that is plant that variety or or the high yield variety. Make sure you plant it early because that will move your harvest date early. So to heck with useless corn. Plant soybeans before wheat so the soybeans come off in time so you can have good wheat. Mind you, the best wheat still comes after edible beans, in my opinion, or peas or some other crop. But still, yeah, really interesting. So we find that too. We find that uh, we get a little bit higher yields on our wheat when we're following dry beans. Um, and we yeah. do have, that's why our, our, our best wheat growing area is where we grow dry beans as well. Yeah, absolutely. But really cool stuff in terms of just, just that, that planting date. And I think you're right. I mean, you can plant early and you can actually cut your seeding rate down and plant early and get five tillers per plant maybe. And, and, and that works. But the reality is that it's not, it, Early doesn't mean you're going to get higher yields. Missing the optimum window means you're going to get lower yields. And that's basically what the data says. Yeah. And we do have growers that are trying different things, you know, to try to optimize that tillering even more to maximize the number of heads per meter squared. They're looking at, you know, changing row spacing, going to narrower rows. Um, And the other thing that we see with the high yield growers is they are planting less seeds per acre compared to the low yield growers. So, if you give that plant a little bit more room to till her out, it will till her out more. Um, but you got to be able to get planted on time so that that way uh, you can get those fall tillers to develop. And, and otherwise you just, you'll miss your target on your heads per meter squared. Um, if, if you miss the planting date. Yeah. And that's really, really interesting that, that the high yield growers do actually plant less seed. And of course, just to wrap it up, Dennis, I mean, planting on time, hitting the sweet spot, even go a little bit early to make sure you hit the sweet spot. Uh, that's going to drive the number of heads per meter squared, but we still can't drop the ball after that, right? We still need to make sure we do all those other good agronomic principles. Yeah. And, and honestly, I think that is one of the things. It's the farmer factor um, that sets these high yield growers apart. And it's it's hard to quantify what that is, but they're paying attention to details. They're scouting their crop. They know what's going on. 
they're getting their applications done timely, and they're doing all the little things that incrementally add up to higher yield. Yeah, absolutely. Once never let the wheat crop have a bad day and and that's yep. going to going to really kind of help. No, awesome stuff, Dennis. I love the yen program. I hope they get it started for corn and soybeans and edible beans and all those other crops. Although, what a ton of work and and my hat is off to you and Joanna Fallings and everyone involved in in the yen project. It it is so much work, but we are learning a whole bunch and we're going to com- continue to learn from that perspective. So thank you very much, Dennis, for joining us here on the Wheat School to drive this thought process home. Whatever you do, grow great wheat.